Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Pilotology. Today we're going over VX and VY, how they change with altitude. I have received several comments on my channel multiple times to discuss it. And oh my God, I hate this question. I hate when somebody asks me this question. I hate when a student bring it up. Not for any reason, it's actually pretty simple, but I feel it involves too much aerodynamics. But, you know, we're gonna explain it today. We'll make it easy and we'll go over it with the pilot language. We're gonna cover the aerodynamics, but we're also gonna simplify it with the pilot language. So we know what's the purpose of VX and VY. VX is the best angle and VY is the best rate. What does this mean? VX is basically for clearing obstacles because it gives you the most amount of altitude with distance wise. Uh, while VY gives you the most amount of altitude with time wise. So if we grab two points and we, may, we measure the amount of altitude we gain in a one mile, VX will give you higher altitude. But if we measure the amount of altitude you gained in 10 minutes, VY will give you the higher altitude. And we already know that, so I'm not going to spend so much time on it. But now we want to understand how does VX and VY change as you go up in altitude? Well, the answer everybody knows is as you go up in altitude, VX will increase, VY will decrease. And where they both meet is the absolute ceiling. The absolute ceiling is the basically the altitude which the airplane cannot climb anymore. That's a, that's the maximum of your airplane. But why does this happen? Why VX increase with altitude and VY decrease with altitude? We to discuss this. Let's talk a little bit about the aerodynamic part. When it comes to VX, VX relies on thrust available versus thrust required while VY relies on the power available and power required. And I hear a lot of people repeating this, but they don't actually understand why. Why does VX rely on thrust while VY relies on the power? And to understand this, you really need to know the difference between the two words, thrust and power. Thrust is just force. When, if, if I want to define thrust, I'll say how hard you push, but power is work per time how much work per time i have got done and to further simplify this let's give two scenarios the first scenario we have a boat which trying to make it to the other side of the river with no drift from the current uh, because there is a waterfall so the goal of this boat is to make it to the other side with little drift or little movement so what they're going to do is they're going to try to generate a lot of thrust a lot of force you have to row hard not fast you have to row harder to cover the most amount of the distance to the other side without drifting on the other hand you have the two boats which are trying to race who's going to make it to the other side of the river so there is no waterfall here it's just pure race so whoever pedal faster it doesn't matter how much you drift whoever pedal faster they will make it to the other side of the river sooner. Uh, so this is power, how much, how fast you pedal. That's why VX relies on the thrust available because it's how hard you push upward while VY relies on the power available and power required because it's how fast your components are working to get you up. doesn't matter the distance, it doesn't matter the airspeed, it's just trying to go there with the most amount of power, most amount of or least amount of time. Now that we know why each one is, is with the other one, now let's talk about the aerodynamic part. And let's start with VX, with the thrust available versus the thrust required. You're going to have your best angle of climb where the, you have the biggest gap between the thrust available and the thrust required. And this is just pure aerodynamic. Th this is a fact. You're going to have your best angle of climb in an airspeed where you have the biggest difference between the thrust available and thrust required because at this point you have the most excess thrust which is going to help you push upward to have the best angle now you see as you go up in altitude the thrust available actually goes down and we already know why because the air molecules is less so the thrust you have in the atmosphere gets down and to maintain the highest gap between the thrust available and the thrust required, actually 
the airspeed has to move up. This is where on the graph you're going to have a higher or the most amount of gap between the thrust available and the thrust required. And the same scenario with the VY, power available versus power required, you're going to have the best rate of climb in the biggest gap between power available and power required. But as we go up in altitude, power available is less. And we can see that you're gonna, as you go up in altitude, you're gonna have the highest gap between the power available and power required at slower airspeed. And this is the aerodynamic explanation everybody keeps giving me, but al always, always it doesn't click. For some reason, I don't understand it. So let's throw this explanation away for now because I'm done with it. You have the formal explanation to give to your examiner. Here we go. Now let's move it away and let's talk in pilot language. Let's actually make sense out of whatever I just said. Now we already discussed that you need excess thrust or a bigger gap between the biggest gap between the thrust available and the thrust required to have the VX. Now, when you are at sea level, VX is pretty sharp. You can pitch up pretty well and clear the obstacle pretty well and get the best angle of climb. But as I mentioned before, as you climb, thrust available goes down due to the fewer air molecules in the atmosphere. That's just a fact. So you can't. So let's say your VX pitch attitude is 15 degrees. You can't maintain this anymore. Okay, that was a privilege at sea level. You don't get this privilege anymore. As you go up in altitude, your engine and your airframe is struggling. You can't keep maintaining 15 degrees anymore. Uh, otherwise, you going to reach a stagnation point. The airplane wouldn't climb anymore. And going back to the river scenario, where you're trying to make it to the other side before the waterfall, you start pretty strong. So I, this is for VX. We're talking about VX example. You start pretty strong and you try to push as hard as you can to go to the other side with little to no drift. But if it takes longer because the other side is far away, at some point, you can't maintain this anymore. If you keep going like this hard, you're not going to row anymore or you might just purely drift. So at some point, you need to compromise the pushing forward and let go a little bit of pushing forward, let the river drift you a little bit in return of still maintaining the best angle for you in that scenario. Yes, it's not as good as you started, but at this point, there is nothing you can do about it. That's just the current conditions. Same with the airplane you had the privilege of climbing pretty steep, but that was at sea level. As you go up in altitude, air molecules get less, thrust available gets less. You don't get this privilege anymore of maintaining 15 degrees of pitch. That was in the past. Now what you need to do to still maintain the best angle of climb at this scenario, to lower the angle of attack, gain some speed, compromise a little bit of your vertical component, but still, at that scenario, you still will have the best angle of climb. So the main two reasons why VX increase with altitude, now let's talk a little bit aerodynamics, is because you need to chill on this engine. Otherwise, the airplane would reach a point where it wouldn't climb or maybe even descend at some point. Uh, so you need to chill and relax and calm down the pitch. But also, you're going to have a, a, a better gap between the thrust available and thrust required as your speed goes up, because the as you speed up, when, when, when we are talking about VX, VX is slower. So the region where VX is, induced drag rolls more. And we know induced drag is higher at slower airspeed. So when you speed up a little bit, you kind of lower the effect of induced drag, lower the induced drag a little bit. And when you lower the induced drag a, a little bit, the thrust required to combat this drag gets less. So that's why you get a higher gap between the uh, thrust available and thrust required as well, because you, your thrust available went down, but you also try to kind of lower the thrust required by getting away from the territory of induced drag by speeding up a little bit. So two reasons. It kind of, the airplane is incapable of doing that anymore, climbing at this high pitch, but also by speeding up, you kind of lower the thrust required to kind of have a little bit more thrust or a little bit excess thrust for you to climb. And this is why VX go up with altitude. Now, 
And on the other hand, VUI, it kind of have the same scenario. It relies on power available and power required. And as you go up in altitude, power available goes down, center air. Now, with same concept, you had the privilege at sea level to climb so fast, 800 feet per minute. But now as you go up in altitude, it doesn't work like that anymore. At some point, you're going to start running out of the power available at this speed. And to still have the best rate of climb, you will have to trade off some of your airspeed to still go up as fast as you can. And let's go back to a scenario, maybe a marathon runner, right? The marathon runner starts at very good pace, but yeah, that's like VY is it's giving them the best rates they can arrive at. But as the marathon continues and they get tired, they can't maintain the speed anymore. At some point, they have to slow down to a more maintainable speed to keep themselves at the best rate. Otherwise, at some point, they're going to stop and they're not going to be able to run anymore. Same with VY. At some point, you can't keep climbing at the speed anymore. You have to trade off some of that airspeed to get the best rate. Otherwise, at some point, you will just stop climbing. And it also has the same concept with drag. VY is faster, so parasite drag rules a little bit more with VY. So as you slow down, you're getting away from the parasite drag and you're reducing the, in, you're reducing the drag. This means the power required goes down. This is one of the reasons also the gap, the highest gap between the power available and power required will be at slower speed as you gain altitude. So to recap this, VX has to speed up because you can maintain as the, as the thrust available goes down, you can't maintain this pitch anymore. You have to lower it. Otherwise, you're not going to climb anymore. Also, by lowering it, you increase the airspeed, which puts you farther away from, from induced drag, which lowers the power required and gives you a better excess thrust at that scenario. And with VY, same concept there. As you go up in altitude, you don't have the privilege of working at the speed anymore. So you have to trade off some of this airspeed to still get the best rate of climb. But also when you trade off and this airspeed and slow down, you're moving away from parasite drag. So the power required goes down. So you get a better gap between the power I have available and the power required. And I wish this video make it, made it simple. Um, please uh, like, comment, uh, and subscribe. And let me know what videos um, you need me to do next. I really uh, would appreciate it if you can give me more ideas on my upcoming videos. And thank you so much.